Hello and welcome everybody. This is the roundup show of the World Championship finals between Magnus Carlsen and Vichy Anand. It was game two today and we had our first decisive result of the match. A win for Magnus Carlsen in typical Magnus style, chipping away, got the victory. And I'm delighted to be joined by Grandmaster Stuart Conquest who's going to have a look at the game with me, look at the highlights, the important moments and really see where it all went wrong for Vichy. We'll go from the beginning, Stuart. And uh, we had a Berlin. No mm. surprises there, would you say? Not really. A little surprise, perhaps, that Magnus... Well, no, I think it was nice to do what he played D3. And, rather um, than Carl Anti-Berlin, if you like. And the, and the main line, uh, rather, 94, that's one of the main lines. The, uh, the Queen exchange, which we see of course, yeah. so much. So Vichy was happy to go into that. And Magnus played the anti-Berlin. Okay, so, so it's up for a fight. Yeah. Well, he played this, this featured in the World Championship last year as well. Mm. But it was normally uh, Magnus on the, on the black side who showed that there was no problems here. Bishop c5 in the main line. Castles sli already slightly offbeat. c3 they normally play, or knight bd2 first, but castles, d6. And now rook e1, perhaps some first mm. major surprise, in inverted commas. It's a normal move in the Spanish, but actually here it's one of the rarest moves. Yeah. But it's the kind of move that Carlsen plays just to get a unique position, right? He wants to play chess, he wants to just take the game onto his own territory a little bit. I guess he would have been preparing uh, the line they got in the game, don't you think? You would have thought that he's prepared rookie one, and after Carlsen's, his idea is that he takes on c6 voluntarily. Giving up a bishop for the knight, but wrecking the structure for black. Well, because he's not playing with c3, he's not allowing black to play knight d4. Right, exactly. And h3. Also an interesting move, huh? h3, just... Well, I think he's, he's, he has to be wary of knight g4 in some positions, or bishop g4. So I like h3, mm -hmm. it just keeps things nice and neat. Vichy played rook e8. Well, now d5 might be an attempt in some positions. So knight bd2. But we mentioned here, Stuart, that this reminded me very much of his game. I, I, I think it was against Peter Sviller, of all people, from the candidates in 2013, where if you play with d5, I think you can take, and if queen takes, I think you can play with knight b3. Mm -hmm. And if bishop b6? And if bishop b6, c4. Okay. Yeah, and you might be able to go queen d6, but queen c2, threatening c5, mm -hmm. and if black has to go c5, Indeed, then, yes. you know, yes, he gets a good bishop, but this bishop is also extremely poor. So I think this was his idea, and I remember he won a very convincing game mm. in London. And this concept with takes and knight b3, it was just beyond me. I didn't even see anything like that before. So I think, knight d I think what Vichy played is absolutely fine. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't want to take any chances. He's in this opponent's preparation, probably. Right. And plays something solid, brings the knight to d7 to play knight f8. Right. Also, maybe d5 is a threat now, right? Perhaps. Because if you can take with the pawn, you'd like to. So knight c4, again, preventing it. Preventing it. And bishop b6, that makes a lot of sense. Because um, you've also got to be a tiny bit careful about this knight jump in some Oh, I see, position. knight a5, nice, yeah. You've got, got to be a bit careful about it in some positions. So bishop b6, preventing that. Now I like a4, a space mm -hmm. gainer. a5 is a threat, so you have to do something about that. I, I think a5 is very much the human reaction. And now, um, you can play b3. That's sort of move, that's a very human move, b3 just uh, solidifying the structure and pose, asking Black a few questions. But then maybe that runs into d5. And the point is that, uh, you know, any major exchange is going to mm -hmm. lose to something like this. But, well, hold on a second, you've got knight c6. Well, I mean, it's, you know, you have to be careful. I, that's why I understand his decision. I was a little surprised. I was watching this. Uh, you were just surprised by knight. I took on b6, but I wasn't studying it intently. Right. Intensely, but I mean, it was just. Uh, I don't know. I think it's logical because if you look at the follow-up, well, you have to take with the pawn, don't you? Because knight, if knight takes just no, d4, just, just, well, 
Oh, I was just thinking just b3, just restrict that knight and threaten d4. You've got the square for b2 for the bishop. This looks like a, a nice... Back spawn on a5 is potentially a weakness. Ten, well, it's, it is a, it's a long-term yeah. fixed weakness, right? And white isn't. Mm. And Magnus just devours these positions, doesn't he? So I'd, I, I, I think c takes b6 yeah, is correct. That, yeah. And now this is his idea. Now he expands, finally gets ready to yeah. expand the centre with d4. So here, I think it's equal, sure. but white's got the better side of equal. Nominal advantage. Mm -hmm. If you had to take a colour, I'd take white. Queen c7 looked normal to me. And you could have played bishop a6 or something, couldn't you, instead of queen c7? What's that bishop doing on a6? So I'm not entirely sure. What about if I just go b3 again? Well, we know what Magnus did in the game, and, and at least that prevents yeah. what happens in the well, game. Well, so. right, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, play rook a3. Yeah. You were impressed by this. I was impressed. I was impressed by that move. And by what comes uh, shortly after as well. Yeah. It's a good move, right? I mean, the rook lift, as it's called, to come to g3. The king side is weak. Potential attacking chances. So Vichy very cautiously played knight f8. I think that's a good move. And now takes, I think you have to take. I think you have to now, now that black can't play knight, takes e5. I think this is a good moment to Mm -hmm. fix a pawn. It also opens up this diagonal for the bishop and that pawn on b6 is it's a little weak in some positions. So I like this and now... That was a move that really I hadn't seen yeah. that coming at all. You like that one? I did, knight h4, yeah. And now I saw that white has this sort of germ of, a, of an attack um, and pressure and uh, the bishop stands very well on c1. Yeah. The bishop stands excellently on c1. Yeah, it's not blocking anything in. Exactly. Um, this was the first time I was started being concerned about Black's position, if you mm -hmm. like. But even here, as uh, many commentators have pointed out during the transmission, actually it seems as though Black's absolutely fine. And his move here, rook d8, that's perfectly fine. Okay. Queen to h5 and f6. And that's a nice defensive resource because the queen yes. is now yeah. coming to f7. Um, I think black's fine, mm, with best okay. defense, I really do. Knight f5, and here bishop e6 is fine. Why didn't he play queen f7? But Lawrence? queen f7, I, I did expect that. Maybe he was worried about just the queen coming back to e2 or something. And then rook g3 threatens knight g's h6 and the pawn. But maybe you just go knight g6 here and say, hey, well, okay, and what, and what? It seemed after f6 he was bound to play queen f7 next. Uh, at least yeah. he did. Yeah, yeah. But he so played bishop e6. Okay. Rook g3. And it was really after his next move where things started to slowly become a bit difficult. Knight g6, very logical move though. But h4 is, yes. is good, isn't it? It's a, it's a good one. Um, the human move. I just felt that White stood better here. Just, just slowly, yeah. but improving, isn't he? His position, White, and his his threat is easy: Queen g4, h5, and good knight. Basically, there's and, just too many threats. And, and short of what he did, what he did in the game, what is Black, uh, what is Black's defense here? Well, this is this is the point. I'm not sure what his defense is. Do you play Rook d7 here, something like that? Then there are all kinds of mad lines with bishop h6, yeah. and it's just a complete havoc. Uh, is that is that the move? Rook d7, just giving added protection, and the queen, of course, covers. So queen g4, maybe you can just go knight f4. Say okay, where's your attack, my son? That's what she might say <laughs> in a very patronising way. But no, he played knight g6, h4, and now he took. And I think this is a key moment. That's a concession, isn't it? It's definitely a concession. It's a concession because I think Vichy may have underrated after pawn takes knight, uh, bishop, knight f4 only move. Yeah. Knight f8 runs into bishop h6 and uh, white's attack, you know, rook d7, rook e4. Hmm. Starting to become really serious. So you have to go knight f4. Takes, takes, and I think the key move, rook c3. 
position is completely changed. But if we see this queen controls the e8 square very importantly, meaning that the rook cannot ever move yeah. from the eighth because rook e8 is mate in two. So rook c3, and it, the more you look at this, the and more you And it prevents queen f7 by hitting the c6 Right, point. exactly. So queen f7 is now impossible because c6 falls. So now black has got a bit of a task. Well, he played c5 quite understandably. And now another extremely precise move by Magnus, rook e6. Again, preventing queen f7. Hmm. Because of b6. Because of b6. Yeah. So black defended b6, rook a, b8. And now another very, very good move by Magnus. Rook up to c4. Yeah, it's just, just power chess move after just, move, isn't it? It's just uh, it's art, isn't it? It's just uh, it's a masterpiece. And what has Vichy done wrong? I mean, hardly anything. What's he done wrong? Yeah. What has he done wrong? Uh, very little. And um, I, I saw this idea of rook c4, rook e4, rook c4 in the game, and I just thought if you get that configuration, dominating the e-file, always threatening this mate, pawn on f4 is weaker than the pawn on f5, should be good for white. Queen d7, understandable. And king h2, that's another very so stop precise the queen exchange. Move. Right. Because now if you want to swap queens, whoops, yeah. rook e8 check, and uh, you win the queen. So you can't do that. So Vichy played, Vichy went a bit passive. Maybe, I mean, maybe he should have gone rook e8, but even this is, you know, are you ever going to allow white to have this pawn? I mean, it looks disastrous. The thing is, when you're under pressure, it's the kind of position that's going to crack, you're going to make another mistake, right? And yeah. then it's really going to be serious. It's already or, borderline serious. It's, al it's already serious. And rook yeah. f8, that's passive. But what to do? Now rook c4. He didn't even bother with this pawn. He didn't take on f4, no. Lance, which, you know, he just thinks he can collect when he wants, I guess. I think it just gives black more checks mm. in certain positions with the queen. And sometimes you want to attack the queen without check. You see what I mean? Well, so Maybe Vichy wants to play rook b e8 next move and he's just stopping that. Also, possible. Well, then rook e4 again, I don't, I, I don't know. Mm. But this just stops any counterplay apart from after. Well, rook e7 is now a massive threat, mm. right? So rook b7, preventing rook e7. Mm -hmm. And now again, white's got a, a wide variety of different moves, but I, I very much like mine. That's a thing. nice... Uh, Visual. Um, that is power, right? Power, that is power. That is, you, there's really not much more power you can get up one line than that. Alakine's gun, is That's that right. what it's called? That's yeah. what it's called, yeah. You told me that in the break. Queen behind two rooks, down open far. yeah. And now rookie seven might be just a threat. Um, so, with followed by queen c4 and all kinds of queen f7s and. Mm. So he went b5. I think that's not only just to try and get some play on the queen side, but just to stop queen c4. Yes. And again here, you might have been able to play rook e7, but the very, this is a, a magnus move, b3. Hmm. Just keeping the status quo, not rushing, because he understands his opponent is under huge pressure. Pro protecting a4 and saying, OK. Now it's around this time they're getting a bit short of time. So already it's difficult. Well, Vichy took, you can't blame him. Yes, you might be able to make a case for rookie seven here, but why not just take back? There's always queen d6 and f3 discover check, isn't there? That's an right, important exactly. tactic that works for black. Exactly. So we'll just put that on the board. If rookie seven, queen d6, and if rook takes b7, well, here you can go queen c4 and it's probably winning. Right? Oh, okay. But yes, in other words, it, it, just to demonstrate the tactic in its, uh, in its natural state, f3 check is, uh, is very, very dangerous. But he just took... Just didn't rush. Okay. Rook b4, and now, now he hit the queen. The queen came to d6, and now f3 check is a threat, but just queen It was f3. nice that queen takes f5 there, Lawrence didn't work, did it, after rook e7? Yeah, so queen takes f5, runs into rook takes b4, a takes b4, queen c4 check, the king has to move, and now queen f7. That's a nice finish, isn't it? Yeah. Rook, you can't take because of the back rank, rook g8 only move, and rook e8, yeah. and uh, force checkmate. So queen d6, queen to f3, and now I think, yeah, you can't take here because of queen b3 check. So queen f3 is just another very classy move, actually. Mm. Multi-purpose move. What do you do with black? I mean, what moves do you have here with black? Very few. You have to take, 
Well, it's the old lesson of Rook on the seventh rank. Rook on the seventh. And now, yeah. now you know, there are all kinds of ideas, again, with the back rank. But more importantly, maybe White's just threatening to go f3. Black has to make a move, right? Uh, so he played f3, which I think is correct. Okay. G3, and now we see the howler of mm. the whole tournament. Oh, the whole match so far. Well, there's only been two games. <laughs> it's only been two games. But it's, it, is, it is a bit of a howler. Because psychologically? Psychologically. I mean, he was short on time. He was under pressure. But you must go active here. You absolutely, you know, there's no other way. You just play queen d2. You just get rid of the, f, the f3 pawn. You don't well, you can't, you, you can't defend it anyway, can you, Stuart? Mm. Yeah, it's sure. gone. So you go queen d2. You play queen's ace f3. And now you try and, and make something happen. I don't know, a move like king h8. And you just keep pressure against f2. Mm. Okay, you can go king g2, but maybe you can even take here. And it's not absolutely certain. It's not game over. It's definitely not game over here. Definitely not. Because there's no, there's always checks along the diagonal. f5 is weak. Rook's come into g8. Yeah. But instead, Rishi played h5. And I bet as soon as he let his hand left mm. the pawn, I he, bet he thought... He just felt there was no threat. He just... Uh, well, he just missed the... He just missed the one I mean, But missing queen b7 yeah. is... I mean, that move is... Really... Yeah. That's elementary. And that's, that's it. That's, that's just game over. That's, rook takes g7 is impossible. You have to go queen takes e 7 But clearly that's... There's no point. And, and that's it. And, and I'd resign. You know, lots of people make mistakes. The best players in the world make mistakes when they're under pressure. He was under pressure on the position, on the clock a little bit. And Magnus, every move of Magnus of about the last 15 moves Chiseled has been away, chiseling it? away. Just brilliant. Creating Isn't something it out just of nothing. Brilliant? Yeah. It's just fantastic. And I mean, then finally, Vichy cracks. Okay. I mean, um, it's easy for us to say, yeah, he played fire one move blunder. But think of all the pressure that led to that course. mistake. That's why he's the best, right? That's why he's the best. Because who else can just work at, you know, a class player like Vichy mm. with all the experience and just literally chip away. I, I've just got this image of one it's of these great, ice uh, carpenters yeah, going like that. Mm. Chip, 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 chip. And he, he folded. So means that Magnus is plus one. Yep. Still 10 games to go. It's the first to reach six and a half wins, the tournament, of course. Last year he did it with two games to spare. Mm. But he only won his first game in round five last year. There were four mm. draws to start the match. But this year has already got off to a flying start. Tomorrow is a rest day okay. for them, so they're not going to be playing tomorrow. Maybe it's a good time for a rest day for Vichy mm. just to recompose come himself. Come back with the white. Come back with white, come back prepared, go in positive. Yeah. He knows that a win levels things up, so it's, he doesn't have to panic and see how it goes. But Magnus and the Norwegian camp are going to be ecstatic after Well, today. they're going to be absolutely mm. delighted because it was just a class game. Yeah. Look how he played, though. Yeah. It's just, it really is, is something that I know we both can really appreciate yeah. as, as professional players, that how he worked so, uh, worked his position to the extent that Anand just cracked. Thoroughly deserved victory yeah, as well. Yeah, thoroughly deserved. Yeah. So, um, hope you've enjoyed that roundup, guys. Uh, thanks again to Stuart Conquest for discussing the game with me. Hopefully, we'll have him, have him back at some point as well to discuss future rounds. Tomorrow, is a rest day in the Anna and Carlson game, but please join us on Chess24 for round six of the Petrosian Memorial, where Aronian, Kramnik, Grishchuk, amongst other big stars, are playing. See you then. Thanks. Until recently, chess was like this. <laughs> chess24 brought you this. Live interactive broadcasts from top tournaments with computer analysis and video commentary by the likes of Jan Gustafsson, Lawrence Trent and Peter Fiddler. A play zone where you can take on opponents from all around the world 24-7. Interactive beginners courses ensuring you pick up the basics fast while having fun. A tactics trainer to sharpen your chess by solving puzzles adapted to your level. Hundreds of interactive videos, letting you watch and learn from star players such as Vichy Anand, Peter Svidler, Paco Vajejo and Hu Yufan. You've given up on that outdated computer? That's why there are more reasons to use Chess24 on mobiles and tablets. Full play zone access, including pre-move. A tactics trainer so you can stay sharp wherever you are. 
computer opponents you can challenge even when you're not online. Live broadcasts of top chess events. And the half? It's free! Well, that's half true. Most features are free, but limited for registered members. You can step up to premium membership and gain unlimited access to our video library. That and much more. All this month, Chess24 is offering a special premium membership for just $9.99 per month or $99 per year. See you at chess24.com.